Okay, here we are at the CBA B yard at Masaro Community Farm. And we did some work here at a workshop last, a few weeks ago actually. And we installed two packages of bees and in, in regular Langstroth equipment. And then a package of bees in a top bar hive. I'm gonna just walk you around a little bit so you can see this. And this is basically the introduction to that workshop, which we unfortunately didn't get because um, we didn't get a full video of that whole session. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm giving you a little look at what occurred. So this colony is one of the package bees we installed. I looked at it uh, today and it has um, a fair amount of brood in it. So the queen is laying, has some stores. We've been feeding it. I gave it a frame of honey and I also gave it a pollen frame so we can discontinue feeding at this point because it's really um, kind of a burden to come. We up here in Woodbridge to do this from where I live. So we want to make sure they can sustain on their own. They look like they're doing really well. So the same thing goes for the other package that we installed. And that's over here. And if you come at the April, if you come to the April workshop, you will get a chance to see the insides of these colonies because that's when I'll be doing the spring inspection, which was actually delayed a little bit because we couldn't do it as the first workshop. We had to do it as the second workshop. So that's what's on tap for April's workshop. So when the video starts, what you're gonna see is me in front of this top bar hive right here. And I'm gonna be explaining the bars and how the top bar hive works. And again, if you come to the next bee workshop, you're at Masaro Farm, you will see the progress this colony has made since we installed the bees. And I'll go over the basic premise of how a top bar hive works again. Um, so I hope you enjoy the video. I hope you're a member of CBA and that you, if you're not, you intend to join and do because we could use your support. And we'll see you all at the spring inspection workshop, which is at the end of this month. It requires a registration. It's in per person and videoed, but it will not be a broadcast on Zoom. So if you want to see the real deal, come down and visit us. So thank you so much. The more natural kind of beekeeping, right? So it's uh, totally natural. No, extracting honey bear is a totally different story. Yeah, it's crushing right. strength. <clears throat> so, so if your if your goal is to make honey, then you know for your whole neighborhood and stuff like that, well then top of hive beekeeping wouldn't be your um, be your choice, but it will make you plenty of honey. You know, you might be able to make sixty pounds of honey out of a top bar hive usually. If you have a good season, like everything else, right? So it's not that it's totally out of the question to make honey but it is a crush and strain method in other words they will build brood nest here then they'll start to build their honey stores around here somewhere and then if you get a good season they'll build um, 16 or 18 frames of brood and they'll build you 10 frames of honey you know, which you can take you know five or six and then um, let them let them have the rest they can still overwinter in this. They overwinter in these, yes. I have, I have them overwinter in, in in this kind of a colony. <clears throat> I have little nukes, top bar hive nukes that are only this big. I put a um, swarm in one of those last year, and it built. It's only 13 frames, so it's about that big. <clears throat> they built uh, um, 13 frames of comb in one week, oh, wow. and they filled and they filled the entire brood nest with, um, they went out to about frame nine or 10 with brood. Queen was an amazing queen. I got her from a uh, apartment house in New Haven. <laughs> and um, <clears throat> they made about four or five frames of honey, which I left them. And, and they, they flew all winter, regular cleansing flights. And then they were there in the spring and there she was, just ready to go. It was such a great thing to see. All right, so, so I'm gonna again explain what we're gonna do here and then we're gonna do it. So we're gonna dump a frame of bees, a box of bees. That's a feeder, we'll come back and talk about that. So I'm gonna dump them right here in this area. And then we're gonna, we're gonna put in 
a special frame, <clears throat> which is a division board, which is going to keep them going any from any to any further back in the cone. You see this little frame is sitting here, and it, you can see it's closed, right? No bees can get past there. I put a little screen on the bottom where the bees can't go underneath it, and so we're going to try to keep them right here, right? And then so we'll dump these in. We'll put the bars back on top, and then we'll wait. All right, so we're going to do two things. If we want to get that package of bees, when we start, um, <clears throat> we're going to test to see if the queen that's in that package has been accepted by the bees. So this is a technique that um, is a little bit more difficult for new beekeepers, but I'm going to show you how you can tell today. Now, when we take the queen out of the package she's in, we'll see what kind of behavior we see um, in the bees on the cage. We got buses or we got wooden boxes. Okay, we got we got old school wooden boxes. So you don't leave the queen inside her cage for a week. In, in, well, so and then... here's the thing with top bar hives. Okay. <laughs> so what we're trying to do here is make sure that these queens draw um, draw straight comb on these bars, All right? So what we're gonna we're gonna direct release the queen if we think. She's been accepted by the package. If she hasn't been accepted by that package, what we'll do is we'll we'll keep her in the in the cage and let them pull her out. I don't like to do that with top bar hives. Okay. I like to do direct release because then she runs up to a bar somewhere. The queen will run up to the bar and sit there, and then they'll just form this beautiful cluster around her. So that's what we're going to try to do today. And I say try. <laughs> because you can never really predict what bees are. They have their own agenda. <laughs> Don't even try. So I think a package of bees will fit in here. What do you think? Yeah. We dump them all in here. Then they're gonna try to crawl out. And it's gonna be a race to get the bars back. <laughs> in the right order. In the, yeah, in the right order. So we're, yeah. so we're gonna make some preparations, right? <laughs> So let's. This is bar one. So yeah. So we have to. We have to really uh, think this thing out. Why does the order matter? Uh, it doesn't really. Except um, what I do is I. So what happens during the. Um, <clears throat> the bars aren't during the course. Yeah, they're not different. The bars are all the same, but what occurs is. They build the comb a little different on some of them, and they build their bee space it a little helps, crazy. It helps you kind of identify. It keeps, like, and I don't want to put a bar back like this. So in other words, if I have a bar, I don't want to put oh. it back like that. Uh, right, so they, I keep the numbers on one side, and um, that's all. Uh, you number the frames in a Langstroth? No, you don't have to number okay. frames in a Langstroth. We're going to, we're, this is a Langstroth, we're going back into Langstroth. I'm just giving you this little, we're having some fun here today. I mean, you know, beekeeping is supposed to be fun. <laughs> and you're not supposed to be afraid of your colonies or anything like that. So we're going to have some fun and we're going to mess stuff up too at the same time. So once I get these bees back in here, somebody's going to help me. Where's Paul? <laughs> we got to get Paul. these bars back in before the bees crawl out. It's a whole lot of fun. And then what we're going to wait for is we're going to wait for this cluster to form. And we're going to be able to see that because we're going to go in behind. After we have this, we'll go in behind. If we have our bees in here and they're clustered up and going from behind, then we can look and take this bar out and take a look and see what they've done. If they've clustered up real nice on this bottom, then we can start to feed them. And I'll show you how to place a feeder in it. We're going to use this kind of a feeder. Get yourself some pine needles in any kind of feeder you use and not, you will never lose a bee in this. They will not drown. And actually what you can fill this thing up with, sir, and the bees will crawl down in through all of those little needles and um, and they'll dry each one of them out. When you when they get finished, they look just like this again. That's totally amazing. And I always think there's got to be like 500 dead bees on the bottom and there's nothing. There's no dead bees at all. So, so Bill, could you do the same thing with a division board? Thing? Oh, absolutely. To stuff it full of um, oh, uh, pine needles. So you will not, they will not drown. And then <clears throat> what we'll do is, this is all really way too confusing for everybody, but... <laughs> but it's fun. It's even confusing for me. I mean, so, so <clears throat> we'll push this bar, we'll push this feeder from the back right up against that cluster. So the whole deal with getting bees to draw wax and is to have a large source of food right near them. You can't feed them little bits of food when you want them to draw wax. You have to have lots of food 
right near them. So we'll put this right next to the cluster and then they will build wax starting where they're hanging. And they'll build wax forward and backward. And if you leave this in here long enough, what do you think they do? <laughs> they build wax right inside. <laughs> and they'll start building wax, and, you know, so you gotta be careful. So you keep pulling it back as they build wax and then they'll build nice, beautiful wax. All right, so uh, we'll do that later on. <clears throat> So let's do a little rehearsal here. We're going to dump the box in, then we're going to come along. There's going to be bees all over the place, right? And we're going to try to do this and get all of these, big, these bars back in while, uh, while, uh, <laughs> while they don't fly away. So the volunteers, Paul's a volunteer. <laughs> <laughs> didn't see him raise his hand. <laughs> he didn't raise his hand, no. And anybody else that wants a volunteer to help smoke bees down, keep them, try to keep them down into the. So you're going to try to do that once we dump yep. these bees in here. Sure. All right. <laughs> All right. So let's let's just do a normal um, package. All right. So you know this is how packages come. If you can, um, you sprayed them with. Me. I have. I can spray. I have more. I didn't spray them this morning because they had the. Uh, they were a little cool. It's a little cold. It's a little cold to spray them. So, um, so we have two packages of bees here. Let's bring them up here so everybody can see them. These are three pound packages, and they are about ten thousand bees. <clears throat> there's a queen in here, I hope, and then there's a can of syrup that they came with, and they feel pretty heavy. So I'm going to guess that there's a pretty much a, uh, a full can in there. And there's not a lot of dead bees on the bottom of the box. That's what you want to look for, right? There's two things you never want to accept with a package of bees. A bunch of dead bees down here or bees that look wet, all right? So that means that they've been stressed to the point where they've regurgitated everything that they had in their honey stomachs and it's all over them. So they're in real stress at that point. Don't accept those two conditions, all right? You got it? You go pick up a package. If it's got a bunch of dead bees on the bottom of it, a lot more than this. There's some dead, there will always be some dead bees. But <clears throat> or if they look wet. All right. Now, packages seem really docile, and um, they are usually, but they can come dry. That's the same by, by a dry package. It means that they have like either run out of fuel in that little can there, syrup they put um high fructose corn syrup in that can they've either run out they've been treated poorly uh during transportation or something like that and they will come out of that box with a little bit of an attitude right but that's not usual with a package because a package of bees really doesn't have anything to protect it's not a colony yet so it's usually not very defensive at all right so um so two things to take away no wet looking bees, no dead bees, and make sure you have a smoker because you never can tell what kind of temperament you're gonna run into when you open up a package. Same thing with swarms. People say, oh, swarms, I can collect swarms and they're real easy to deal with, I, no problem. But you know, you can get a dry swarm and a dry swarm will not, is, is one that was a little, is usually a little defensive. So Paul, you're gonna have to, I'm gonna use this box here so if you can take those away and strip that wood off of them. Nice. So the amount of bees in this one here, that's acceptable in terms of the dead bees yeah. in the bottom? Yeah, there's, there's, there's always going to be some. That's on the limit. That's on the outer limit of it. I don't like to see that much, that many dead bees in a package, but it's okay. We're going to, we, we accepted that package. Paul already looked at that. All right, what am I doing here? I'm on the wrong thing. Will you guys please help me? <laughs> we are. Whoa, we almost installed the whole package. <laughs> right now, that, there is, that is another way of doing it. <clears throat> We're not going to be able to do that today because it's too cold. But there is a self-install method for packages. where, um, and, I'll, and I'll talk more about that when, when we get into doing a length for Fox. Uh, we can't install it that way today because it's too cold. We have to we have to dump our bees today. Otherwise, you could actually configure hive boxes where you can put this package in the bottom, just take the queen out, pull her up to a box on top, 
and the colony will follow her out. But he may not be able to fly that much today. I hope so. Okay, here we go. Have we got a smoker ready? Right. <laughs> Just give them a little touch of smoke. They look pretty calm because they're not going to go much in many places. So the first step in installing the package is to take off this um, crazy little piece of um, Luan. Now when I open this, the bees can come out. But um, so I'm going to keep this. I want to put this right back on. My goal here is to get the uh, queen out in the can. Right, that's what I really want to get out. I usually have a little um, uh, needle nose pliers that I use there. And that allows me. Now you're holding the. So he's going to see. He knows how to install packages because he knows he's holding the queen cage now. <laughs> if that drops in there, you're going to have to put your hand down in I've there. I've been down there already. Right, right. Thank you very much. <laughs> and get him out. So been there, done that. So you want to pull it out? With that, go ahead. It's much easier. All right. So now, before you get that can out of there, get ready with that piece of plant. There he is. Now, we, we don't want the bees hanging on the bottom of that can to fly all around. But they will. All right. Okay, yeah, that's good. And pull your pull your tab a little bit closer so you can get it out. Yeah. Doesn't want to come out? All right. Wonderful. So how much is in there? Good, yeah. All right, so this is totally full. So the question is, did they get anything out of it? And look what they do. I mean, they just put these two little pinholes in here. And I never could figure out how bees could get all of this syrup out of the can. This can is totally full. Yeah. Right? It's like crazy. Is there any, can any come out of there? Not much. A few, a few drops, but I mean that's just like. So I don't how know. long were they being fed like that, though? Well, from okay. wherever they were, they were yeah, shook. They probably shook I don't know where they yeah, were shook. That's kinda... All right. <laughs> Good idea. All right, so everybody, they're you gonna know, fly. like we don't know, right? They're flying around and they seem pretty calm. But if you have, you know, protect yourself at this point <laughs> if you need to. All right, so now we're going to try to get the cage, the queen cage out, right? So to get the queen cage, whoa, 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 they're going to want to come out. You got it? We're, yeah, we're going to get a couple of bees out of here with the queen. Oh, yeah. well, I didn't just put them right down. I mean, take it, you can hold it. All right, so there's there's what they're doing to the queen. So is that a good thing for them to do? Well, so no, well, they always do this. I mean, they're, they're always around. They're very interested in the queen. Now, my hands were cold before. No, not anymore, because it's because <laughs> there's a lot of heat coming off just these little bit of bees. Right? You can yeah. feel it coming out of there. We're doing that for the appeal. Huh? All right, so what we're going to look for is how they're reacting toward this cage. Now, are they, did they have, they accepted the queen? She has a nice yellow dot on her, which saves me a little bit of time. There's no attendance in this box wow. with the queens, which is... There's no what? No attendance. Got it. No queen. Yeah, they usually have attendance in this, in this kind of a box. This is called a, a Benton box. All right, so that's uh, a three. It's got three holes in it. There's the candy plug, and so there's a there's a cork plug there, which they now put in sideways, is because it's easier for them. I loved it when you know when they put it when they put it in sideways like this. It gives the bees an opportunity to figure out how to get in there, and sometimes they chew that cork out. Right, so the same thing on the bottom. I'm sure they put it in. Oh, they actually on the bottom when they put it in, what I would consider the right way. So. Um, <clears throat> It's so. What would you guys think? Are they working? Are they are they treating this cage aggressively or, no. or kind of, no. so you don't think they're cute? So you're all in agreement that we can let this queen out? And yeah, you are. Yeah. <laughs> um, they were fine. So if you brush over, it, so take a look at this. So if you brush over, right, they just move out of the way. They're not attached. They're not. They don't have their okay. mandibles attached to the screen or anything like that. I think they're so, folks. I'm going to go with the the general consensus <laughs> that they're pretty calm here, and I think they are too. All right, so um, there would be no harm to wait a few days, though. Right? There would be no harm to wait for a few days, and you will do that with a Langstroth box. Yeah. Yes. All right, so Why? well because it's because <clears throat> I don't want to stare you into trying to direct release in that kind of a box. All right, but this box will do. So now, um, 
who wants to hold the queen? Yeah, well, let's shake the bees off of her, all right? And then we'll um, we'll put her in our pocket. She looks pretty good. She's got a yellow dot on her, like as I mentioned. She's a kind of a, um, you can forget about the ancestral heritage of this queen. Don't even listen to that when they tell you that. No, this is a Carniola and this is an Italian. This is just a mixed breed queen. Um, they're fine. You know, they're they're just the right. Yeah. Now I have installed bees and then gone home and I'll go back in the house and had the queen in my pocket. So you are not <laughs> going to allow me to do that now. You put her in there where I keep her warm in there. All right. So now the next thing is to shake the bees in this thing here and then put the bars on, right? Now the bars are in this order. Nobody's going to get, we're not going to get too excited about putting these bars back on. One goes here, two goes there. All right. All right. So now to get these bees in it in the position where we're gonna we're gonna shake them down we're gonna actually try to get them on the ground i don't like doing this with the queen in there but with just bees it's fine but with the queen i don't like to shake the queen i don't know why maybe it's my royal heritage or something like but anyway so let's try to get all the bees down on the bottom there they are they went down on the bottom real nice and all we're gonna do is shake them in here's where it gets fun but Take that off of there. One, two. Yeah. So we're going to just pour them in. Sounds like a bowl of Cheerios. It does. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We didn't block that entrance, right? We should have blocked that entrance. Somebody find something to block that entrance. All right. So start putting those bars on. No, that's two. That's two. What happened to one? I don't know. You got confused. Well, there's one. No, they got to go in the front. <laughs> one, two, two. So one goes like this. Whoops. Two, there's your bar. Two, <laughs> hand up to me. Six. Just put some grass in. Seven. and we're going to move this bar back. Oh, now we're going to leave 10. All right. So they're in the colony now. All right, that's good. Got it? Got it. So they're going to want to come out of there, but we're going to keep them in with some little bit of this. Are you ready to smoke them a little bit? Mm. All right, they're in the box. But who's not in there? The queen. This is a great class. <laughs> <laughs> Best learners. We're going to let her in there, right? We should. That's what we said That's we were going to do, right? Yeah. Just getting the, getting the whole thing there. <clears throat> we still have... The bees. So the, Well, there's some of our dead bees, and we have also live bees in there. And uh, so we're going to get them in, too. <coughs> and uh, <clears throat> so nice warm day I wouldn't even bother I would just let them out there and they'd fly up in, the, in themselves but we're going to have to get them out there's a lot of bees around me but they're not <laughs> they like them they're not being they like uh, aggressive so <clears throat> so how to get this queen out of here and into that colony I usually let her in the front door right so um, she hasn't been laying for a while so she is flight ready. <laughs> yeah. Um, that could be a problem. Yeah. Right? Because she, if we take her out of that cage right now, she can fly. Mm -hmm. um, we know that this is our our um, follower board here, right? So the colony's bees are right here, actually. See, there they are. They're already up here. Yep. See? <clears throat> I'm just saying, we had a queen. Where is she? <coughs> oh, no. Take it easy. Da, uh, uh, uh. So you don't see yeah, it just, in. You got helpers there. Take 10 out.
that's your colony. Go ahead in there. All right. Come on, get off the queen cage. All right. Okay. No, she doesn't want to leave the queen cage. She likes that queen cage. She's on the sideboard now. Okay, put that in there nice, nice and carefully. Yeah, the problem with top bar hives is getting them them back in. Without you got crushed, yeah. yeah, without crushing them. So, all right, the queen's in there. We got a lot of bees flying. Now let's see if we got any that will signal for us, Nazanov wise. Um, we'll open up a little side of this and see if they'll start to signal that this is their colony. It's nice and it's a little bit calmer now, right? Mm -hmm. We're not trying to get out as much. The queen's back in there. Well, what do they do to signal? They'll use their Nazanoff glands. So we'll see if that happens. Why did you take the queen out of the queen cage rather than let, let them adapt to her? Um, so I explained that a little bit earlier, and I, but I want to go over that again. I think they've already accepted the queen because of the way they acted toward her in the cage. They've been with her for three or four days at this point, you know, and um, I also happen to know that um, there's been a lot of research done where um, direct release of queens really doesn't do much to to uh, get to have them rejected, mm -hmm. you know, because they've been already in transit for sure. for a couple of days and probably more like a week. And uh, they don't have a queen, so they take any, they'll accept any queen. I don't recommend that you do it um, if you don't. Uh, if you're putting in a Langstroth box, I think you should just follow the, the instructions for a Langstroth box. Because that is what we got. If there's no comb in there, what's the queen kind of... Again, she's not able to lay until there's comb, right? They're going to make it. I know, but, I mean, that's going to take some days and stuff. What, what keeps her... One day. Got it. And then the queen will start laying on whatever they make. Right. So so they'll start making comb. They'll make a quarter of an inch of comb. Mm -hmm. Queen will lay in there and they'll build a cell around it. Mm -hmm. So they won't stop her from laying. Mm -hmm. All right? So we did pretty good. You got a bee on your head? Yeah. You like that, huh? You like that feeling? <laughs> <laughs> so Bill, is that the syrup that goes into the feeder box? Yes. Okay. And that goes in yeah, that's today. That's a beekeeper. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, what do you want to do with these bees? Dump them in, do you? Where? You're the boss. <laughs> <laughs> Let's open up this thing a little bit more. There. Right. So, so now, see, they're a lot more concerned. That's a guard bee. See that bee that came out of there? Yeah. That is not a friendly bee. Yeah. <laughs> How did you What is that look like? <laughs> Wouldn't they walk in? Uh, they would normally walk in. Yeah, if I just put them like this, they'd normally <clears throat> walk in. Of course, now we got a little problem because we have, don't, don't have a way to let them walk in. Hmm. But we'll we'll shake them back in there. Do you know it's a dry bee by the here? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, that came right out. <clears throat> came right out to look for. That's amazing. If I saw some signaling, I would just dump them right here. If it was warmer, I could dump them there too. If there, or even if the sun was out, I could dump them. <clears throat> And what signaling are you looking for? A signal like that they make with a little gland in the back of their body. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, it's not actually um, making any, they're not actually signaling at all. Yeah. So they haven't really yeah. decided that this is their yeah. home. Is that where they like, stick their, stick their, like, they stick their hind there. up and yeah. they, they curve yeah. their yeah. back yeah. of their abdomen up mm -hmm. and a little um, a little gland is exposed yeah. in the back called national gland. And, um, but you can actually see it. You can actually yeah. see it, and some people <clears throat> tell you they could smell it. Yeah. They can't. <laughs> There's nobody that can smell that except for a bee. Oh, yeah, I smell them as an <laughs> <laughs> is, is there any place for using lemongrass to attract them? Uh, so, so lemongrass is uh, part of the uh, signature odor of Mazinoff. Yeah. And so that's why a a, 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 an odor like lemongrass, it's not necessarily exactly like that. <clears throat> hey, I just noticed there's a little door in that. Look at that little door. 
this this box is broken, right? And they patched it up and put a little door oh, yeah. in there. A knot <laughs> fell out. <laughs> we'll knock that out and use that as a way to get the bees in there. <laughs> All right, are they signaling yet? Many of them signaling. Yeah, this one is. All right, so there's a there's a bee signal in its Nazanoff clone. Yeah. See that little bee there? Yeah. So they're beginning to say, this is where we live. All right, so now that's going to gather all the rest of these bees, and if you give them a little bit of time, there'll be more than one that starts to signal, and you'll get three or four or five. And, of course, you can't smell it, but the bees that are in this area can, and they'll come around, and they'll this just... This is not helping you. So, some of these no, guys fine. look like they is might it? be, too. Huh? Some of these guys are... Yeah. What's that? Or, yeah, because they think they belong in that package. It's exactly right. They're doing exactly the same thing. Now, if you just left that open, yep. would they, the other bees, once they're signaling and going yeah, inside, would yeah. they follow? Well, yeah. Up, about yeah, on a nice pass. warm day, all we'd have it's to do is put this like this, and they would fly out of the box and go right in the front entrance. But it's not a nice warm day. Let's put a little, couple more bees on the door and see what they do. Oh, and her oh, over I there. See. I see. It's like yeah. Yeah. We're going in, right? Look at this big drone. Even yeah. with all this smokiness <laughs> here, it's they're into they're it, huh? They do. So they're walking in, right? You can see that? Yep. They're just going in. So let's let's do that. Let's empty this package by just letting them go in the front entrance. The sun's coming out. <laughs> Right, they're walking right in. Now, nurse bees, young bees, just love to walk. They don't. They would rather not fly if they don't have to. I get that because that flight to Bangkok. I'm covered with bees. <laughs> All right, we're good. I mean, we'll let these bees figure out how to get back into that colony. We'll come back later on and do that. Let's move over to now install a bee in a Langster pump. Very good. So what did we do here? Let's recap what we've done and what why we're letting this sit here like this, right? I said earlier that we're now going to want to see them cluster up into a nice ball. It takes about a half hour. The queen will find her place, and then we'll move that feeder in there, right under that cluster of bees. Now, they should cluster up fairly good because it's cool. So, how are you going to get the feeder in under there? Aha! All in the back. Then, right? <laughs> good question. <laughs> See, it's a good question when I have an answer for it. <laughs> Yeah, I have my little division board in here. See, they can't get in there. So then I'm going to put the feeder in here, remove the division board, and slide it in. But I don't want to let these think they can get in there, so I'm going to cover this. Because they'll think they can get into the colony by going in this way, and they'll be disappointed when they get in there. All right. All right. I mean, that worked fairly good. All right, so let's... let's now. When this top bar hive gets rolling, you're going to be able to see it all season, right? You'll be able to come here and see the kind of comb they built. And then I usually put little arrows on here. So as they build comb, look at this. Trophilactic feeding. Ooh. All right, so that's what you're seeing there. I must have dropped a little uh, ball of honey there. And what kind of feeding did you call Trophilactic. That? Uh, that's uh, proboscis to proboscis, tongue to tongue. Right, that's how bees... Show like off. This. Yeah. Um, <laughs> 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 Same thing. Yeah. Right? Why would they do that? Well, they're they're feeding, they're feeding each other. Each other. Oh. Right? Look at that little. So, Bill, you were gonna sit. You're, you're gonna put the feeder on this end. And then I'm gonna yeah. remove this. To I'm to gonna remove side. this division board. Division board to the other slide side. the feeder in. And then move mm -hmm. the division mm -hmm. board to the other side. I might. It doesn't matter at that oh, point. Okay. As long as we can fill the whole. So as long as it's underneath. Right underneath the cluster. You're gonna see it. So do you pour all the contents of the stuff that's in the can into the... I don't use uh, high fructose corn oh, syrup for bees, so I won't use that. <laughs> that does that have protein in it? No, yeah. it's just syrup. High fructose corn syrup. All right, so oh, wait, now come over here. Don't miss this. There's a bunch of bees signaling with their Nazanoff gland at this point, right? So now they said, hey, the queen's in here. There's a lot of bees in here. We live here. 
So now that this is what will collect all, all the bees. I was hoping this would happen. I was wondering. Usually it happens sooner than this, but it's kind of cold. And now, whose who's pheromone is around this cage? The queen, right? So what are they saying? They're saying, well, where did you go? <laughs> no. That, that's a behavior that you, you'll see during the beekeeping season when you um, disturb bees and there's a lot flying around. Yeah and um, you've shaken frames or anything like that. Whenever there's, whenever there's an opportunity for them to signal where they live, they'll do it. So that they collect all of these bees around. Like you see, there's, a lot, there's not a lot of bees flying at this point. Right? No. So not a lot less bees flying. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, are they? Yeah. <laughs> 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 so is the question to be when they're signaling, is that similar to when they're in the summer when it's hot and they're trying to accept no. the cool hive? No, nope. that's a fanning position. <laughs> right, so how is it different from the fanning position? There's, well, with Nazanoff, they're, they're, they've got this little gland exposed. See it? That little white thing? Yeah. Right, you can see it right here. Yeah. That's the Nazanoff gland. Well, so any the, of the bees get confused when you start Oh, okay. So you're actually, you're, no. you're actually seeing the gland. The bees. They'll always stay with their own. Yeah, they'll stay with their own. Well, well, there might be a little drifting today because okay. we're going to be we're going to be doing that. But but normally they will stay with their own. Time. So that one's fanning. Yeah, they're they're fanning. They're, what they're doing is they're dispersing the Nazanoff gland odor. You're saying at the very tip. The very, the the very, very end, end of the, 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 the yeah, yeah, the very end. You see that white, the little white? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. That's a gland. If that, that bee's fanning, you won't see that gland, mm -hmm. and their abdomen won't be bent that way. Right? It'll be curved the other way. So you can see some postures here. I mean, this is Naz This is classic Nazanoff all in here. And there's a dead bee. Of course, they'll pull this bee and the undertaker's bees. There's undertaker bees in the colony also. And their job is, of course, to get rid of all of the dead bees. Now, some bee had a little bit of um, dysentery from being stuck in the cage, I guess. You see so that not, right now? A few of them? Uh, there was a little spotting on the front of the colony. I just wiped it off. We're going we're gonna to dump the bees power. in this box the same way as we dumped the top of our high uh, bees in, but we're going to take a little bit, a little bit different tact here because we're going to actually let them release the queen. Right? We noticed in the last package that they don't have any attendants in the colony, so it doesn't really matter how we install the queen cage. Normally, the, if the queen cage has attendants in it, you want to make sure that um, the cork that she can get, you have to put the cage in there so that it, she's up. Right? She, she exits out of the top. Because if she has attendants in there and they die, right, and you, you had it down, they'll block the, the exit and she wouldn't be able to get right? so, um, um, This kind of installation is a little bit more complicated because from that perspective, because you have to understand that about how you position your queen cage. But in this case, there aren't any attendants in that cage. So we can install it so she can come out of the bottom or the top. And it's nice because uh, we want her to, the little tab that keeps her in there, that little thing, um, that we can wrap over the top of a frame to hold it, but yeah, I'll, I'll show you a little technique because we have drawn comb, we're going to squish her in there so that she can uh, get released between two frames. I'll show you what. But you need to make sure her her screen is exposed, right? Her screen yep. has to be so facing these. Lesson learned. Yes. And don't try saving them in the middle of the night when you realize you've made that mistake. <laughs> <laughs> you did what? Very they good really tip. Ticked you did, would you? <laughs> at night? Very I went good in time. at night trying to oh, yeah, no, no, that's a, remember how I put her in and they were not happy. That's with not, not a, no. Okay, so let's no. go over the, um, uh, Paul, do we have an empty box? An empty deep? Yes. So when we get an empty deep, I'll show the other, I'm going to show you the technique you can't use today. So if it was nice out, <clears throat> we could put an empty box like this down here. We could put this package of bees. in here like this they fit okay. then we could put this drawn comb on top and we <clears throat> took the queen out and put the queen up here between a couple of frames right above the can hole see that down there 
and these would install themselves. Like they would come out of the box go up to her. and they would go up and get around the queen and they'll install themselves. You come back uh, an hour later and they'll, they'll all be out of the can. Now, you know, uh, <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. I will definitely defrost <laughs> later. All right, so um, <clears throat> so that's like an indirect way of an indirect method of installing the beast. It works, but if it, but you got to be very careful with it because if they don't install themselves, then you're going to have to shake them in anyway. So you can't let this go overnight. So, for instance, if we did this now and we tried it to see if the bees will come out of the cage and uh, come, come out of the uh, box and package and go up to around the queen, we'd have to come back two or three hours later and see if it actually installed. If it didn't, then you got to shake them out because they'll die <clears throat> overnight, you know, if they don't cluster up and get around the queen. So, um, So as a rule, Bill, would you recommend just shaking them in? Well, you know I, in? I sort of always shake them in, but, um, <coughs> this just, you know, that's another technique yeah. I wanted. I, I want, I'm almost, the reason I'm hesitating at this point is to think maybe we should try it with one, you know, and see what happens. So we can, we can your, try. Your bees. We can try it with, <laughs> this, one. with this one. Yeah. How many packages did we? Are you and we have two, we have two more packages. Yeah. Right? Three more, two more packages, right? Okay. It's 10 o'clock. It's 10 o'clock. Or just what? Eight minutes to 10. Time flies. You want to get it? You want to end this? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm just being aware of the, of the, of the time. Because the, oh the sun came out, you want to go home. <laughs> We're staying. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so. Um, what do you guys want to do? Yeah, she was pretty young. You want to try it? Sure. Adventures. <laughs> the sun's out. All right, did, so to, to do this self. Um, install technique, you need another box. You want another box? Yeah, and an inner cover. I have the inner cover right there. All right, so because we're going to, what we're going to do is we're going to put um, uh, our feed usually goes on the top box. So you know what? Let's not even put any feed in it because we're going to use our division board feeder, so that'll be yeah. fine. All right, they'll find that. Um, <clears throat> all right. <clears throat> so that's kind of simple. This one. Mm -hmm. Let's get that get that package out of there for me, please. And um, let's do the same thing. Get that uh, feeder jar out. You got your little tool. For new package, oh. do you do two deeps or one deep initially? Start. I didn't. I can't hear. I didn't hear that question. For a new package of bees, you just do one deep and we drop them in and let them fill that up. We're, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna do that now. Yes. 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 The answer is yes. Yes. You, <coughs> yes. you don't want too much, and no. just yeah. the one. Okay. Yeah, the hole's a little tight. Especially if you're See, starting with this foundation and they have to build the cones out. You want to kind of keep them Give in one area, get that done, and then the next one. Now this is a nice glob of bees to come out with. See how nice that is? Wow. I guess they like it. So somebody, so Valentine's Day. Is that on the queen? So you're you're done. Me? Paul, you're installed. Put that box in there. <laughs> no, no, you don't need that. Oh, I just want to, I just want to, you know. I'm, I'll block that front entrance. We don't want bees coming in there. You can use one of those. Yeah. Just try to keep them in. Too long. Is that right? No, you're not. It's not blocked. It's too big. It's too, it's too wide. You need to take off a better Here, here's a broken one. Yeah, this one oh, there's a broken one, yeah. Grass, uh, pine needles, you can use anything. Pine needles. How do we do it? Actually, open. you know what? Here, just here. put them in. <clears throat> here, let's use this. Yeah, they might come kind of roaring out of there. No, yeah, no, 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 Okay. And I got to put that on top of there. You need assistance. Like yes. I'm a lurch. Those stragglers from the Langstroth that you packed, you threw in there. You've got a few bees that have been hanging out. Yeah. Do they get confused? Yeah, they they'll drift. They could, box, on, on it doesn't matter? Yeah, they'll drift around. It won't matter much. They just follow a queen yeah. regardless. So there's the queen. I mean, you know, in there. we like This is perfect because it has a nice bit of uh, cluster of bees around her.
we can't really see where she is because we have to take the cork out. <laughs> and that's the back of the cage. There's the front of the cage. So there's the candy plug down at the bottom. We knew that though, I think. Let me see if I can grab the cage itself while Paul gets the candy plug. Out. <laughs> what plug is what? The candy plug. Oh, I need to see, where's my knife? Thank you. You can you can usually bite them out, but I don't. <laughs> <laughs> My dentures don't work that well. Your dentures aren't working. Now this is where Paul stabs me with the knife. <laughs> All right, candy so plug is the candy plug, the candy plug is um, exposed. exposed. I was a surgeon. Do we once. have attendants in here? <laughs> What's up? Do we have any attendants in here? No, no attendants. And this queen is not marked. What, what do you mean by attendance? Uh, they put sometimes they put little bees in the cage with the queen. They should you should always do that. Actually, all right. So and we have drones. There's too. no attendance. All right. So we're good with the bees chewing out the plug this way, and then the queen can come down and out. Now, if they had attendance, we couldn't do that because mm -hmm. they could die and plug the hole. All right. You got it? Because she's got to yes. come out of the bottom. So we don't do that. So if there were attendants in there, we'd have to install this this way, right? And it gets complicated because then you got to like flip this thing around. So what we're going to do is we're going to put her in here. We're going to squeeze her between two drawn comb frames. Get the bees out of the way. Now, we know the cage sides are here, right? Yep. I'm going to put that next to a... We're going to wedge them between these two frames. We're going to wedge her between these two frames. All we're really doing here is to try to get the, we're trying to get the bees up out of that box. And now with this, we can turn this thing and kind of use it as a hook that keeps these keeps the cage from falling down. They're taking the stapling. Really? Now I'm squeezing. The, I'm squeezing the cage between two cones, right? Or put it, put that in there. No, you got to put more frames. Oh, you don't put more frames in. Oh, where are the frames? You want to take frames from there? No, I got. Well, you know what? I could. Right? I'm, gonna take, I'm taking frames out of here, anyways. Oh, this one here. Just put, <clears throat> just put those whole frames in there. Okay, okay, I got it. Yeah, use these. These are nicer. New. These are new. Yeah. Yeah. What do you got, honey? Yeah. You've been holding out on him. Even better. <laughs> well, I have certain... You know... I can't stop going down. Oh, there we go. Hey, well. That's good. Now, Bill, which way is the screen oriented in that? Uh, this toward, way. Um, so the screen... So if you look down here, you can actually <coughs> see that. I've yeah. got it squashed okay. between two yeah, frames, yeah, but yeah, the screen good. open so she, they can still get it. The bees can still get at it. Oh, wow. wow. You're not putting that in there. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Are you saying this one's there's no queen? No. Oh, look at the honey drip. Look at the honey yeah. pouring off of that. No, I knew that this this is so, I rescued these bees yeah. uh, from a hive that. Right, that stuff. should be enough. Put the inner cover on, and then we'll just put the top on it, and that's installed. That's easy, huh? Yeah. It's not gonna work, but it's easy. <laughs> <laughs> so we come back. Later we? And We're gonna figure out if they install. We're gonna come back a little bit later and figure out if they installed it. Are you going to put a feeder on top of that? Or? No, we're going to put a division board feeder in there. This is, we're just beginning the installation on this, right? So we're going to put this division board feeder in there if they install. And you'll know real quick. Well, we'll know in a little while. So assuming it installs, right? we will come back and all the bees will be in this top box, right? So all we got to do then is lift it up. The, the queen will not be out of the cage yet, right? Because that's going to take her a while to get out, right? And then we have to just keep, um, take the bottom box out, put this down on the bottom box, and then put the feeder in and start the process of install. All it does is keep it from shaking the bees. That's all it does. So the question on the table was, if you have plenty of resources, do you have to feed bees? Not, no, except that honey requires that bees can't eat honey, right? Who knows what bees have to do to honey to eat it? 
dehydrated. No, it's already dehydrated. They dilute it. They have to mix it with water. All right, so if there's not a source of water around, it doesn't do, do them really that good. They, they'll, they'll get by with eating honey that without water, but it requires a source of water. So they have to actually thin the honey. So it's better to give them syrup because it's already thin. How do they eat candy board? Yeah, uh, the like same it. way. It has, no of, it has more they have metabolic moisture in the wintertime. Yeah, the and if you're, right. if you're not ventilating your colony and drying it out like crazy, that'll be available for them in the colony, and they will use that to actually thin the honey. Now, you'll notice in the middle of winter when bees go on a cleansing flight, what do they go for? They go for water, right? They're on the top of your colony where yeah. there's some melted snow. And they, they go someplace, they look for water all the time. They're looking for water because they're going to try to dilute the honey. They're not thirsty. They so might be. We should always keep a little bit of water then outside, like a bird bath or something like that. Did they recommend that? Yeah. Yeah, because they have it all over my bird bath. Like a spa. And your neighbors? <laughs> and my neighbor's <laughs> pool. And your neighbor's pool? Right. <laughs> That's what, yeah, well, they. <laughs> your neighbor will hate you? <laughs> <laughs> Mine does. Is there any um, benefits of sanitizing those feeders? Yeah. I, I just feel like I need to. I mean, go with your feelings. Yeah. Okay. No, I mean, it's I'm a, a nurse, thing. you know? Yeah, it's a good thing to keep it clean. You know, I, I don't know if you have to actually do, you know, you don't have to put it in an autoclave. Right. But, but I mean, you, I'm a scientist, so I'm, I'm going for it. You know? So, Phil, I got, somebody gave me some of their, uh, their drawn comb, the brains with drawn comb on it, mm. but I mm. don't know them. Wow. Mm. So, is, 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 am I better off going with? It's like a taboo to use somebody else's. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I, you know, if you don't know the actual history of that. I didn't know if I should um, stick them in the freezer. Treatment is something that does that. But then I saw hmm? somebody suggested. No, there's a the, the, American the, foul brood. And yeah, if there's um, if there's a sporulated uh, disease in there, like American foul brood, which is bacteria that. Sporulates, those spores stay in the environment for 40 or 50 years. Okay, they don't you can't away. get them out of comb. You gotta, you gotta get rid of comb. Yeah, that's that's good. Good. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Right? We all yep. know that if there's that one, one apiary oh, in all of the mm -hmm. state, it would be mine that gets burned down. These so. are just nuts. <laughs> yeah. You meant national. <laughs> yeah, no, there's, um, I mean, they're, 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 they're probably making a claim, like, like early Italians, like, like I, early so Italians, as opposed, yeah, right, this is, early Italians, from, for this, from the time of Caesar, <laughs> but then it's, 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 okay, all right, so let's take this package, and you can, let's try that board, that piece in the right hand, all right, same thing, not a lot of dead bees, there are some over here, that's acceptable, place? right, we talked about that earlier. There's a nice um, cluster of bees, and you see they're hanging on the queen really nice. So to install, uh, we're going we're gonna to treat the queen cage the same as we did on, on that frame. But now we're going to have to, we're going to, because we're doing, we're going for a permanent thing. We're not going to go back and look at this. We're going to let them release the queen in three days. Nope. We're going to have to make sure that the queen cage is more permanently connected to those two frames we put her on, and so that she can be released and there's not going to be a problem. So we're going to take a little bit more time when we bring the queen cage out with this one. Same thing. Can in the queen. <clears throat> it's getting boring, isn't it? We should come up with a new way. Why aren't you guys Yeah, there we have. Why didn't we do that? I didn't bring it. Oh. <laughs> Is this more fun? We know the drill right now. We're going to take the queen out, and you're going to put the. Now they built some wax on the on the side of the can. See that? Isn't that hard? The the bottom one seems to be harder. You can take the queen out. Whoa! Less bees hanging on this cage. All right, since we're going to install them in there anyway, let's just get them. You gotta get that queen. There she is. Anybody wanna go and pass her around and take a look at it? There she is in the cage. You can see she's a nice yellow mark. I don't think yellow is this year's color, but I I like it. I use it. 
A lot. Is yellow this year's color? I don't know. Is it it I must can... be. I mean, they. I, I always use yellow. I don't care about the day, uh, the color. I always use yellow to mark my queens because you can see it better than any other color in the colony. And can you ever teach class on how to mark? Oh yeah, we can teach a class on how to mark. And you start with you start with drones. Um, yeah, I have. So in there, I have a queen thing. Get it out of there and the pen. You see the queen on the side there? Yep, and the pen. <clears throat> and we will mark a queen. We'll mark a drone actually. All right, so yeah, we'll mark a bee. We'll mark a bee before we go. Thank you for reminding me of that. All right, so now we're going to have to squash her between two frames so that the cage is out and bees have access to it. We're going to remove this candy plug now. Paul, you want to do your surgery on that? I'm not holding it. <laughs> okay, got it. All right, we got that cork out of there. That was a little bit hard. Yeah, that was a little. Now, so you should really test, always test the um, uh, hardness of that candy. You really don't want them to have to spend five days trying to get it out. You know, I would only give bees three days, and then what I would do is I'd come and release her no matter what. Right, but if you want her to come out faster, you can take a little nail or a pin or something. <clears throat> now what I suggest is that, where'd she go? Oh, she's up there. <laughs> oh, she's eating candy herself. Um, wow. Look at that. She went all the way up there. I couldn't find her. I looked in her, no queen. Um, <laughs> you would pierce that. No, just, you wouldn't want to use a four inch nail on this. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I'm saying. I'll leave it right there. Do you, do you pierce it all the way through or do you just. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> you give it a little bit of twirl, but you got to make sure you're not <laughs> like, oh, I just scraped the dot off the queen. I mean, that's not a good idea. You got to make sure your nail's no bigger than You don't want to impale her. <laughs> you don't want to impale her. So let's get Regicide. two, let's get two frames really out of there and one of you brave people can. Um, <laughs> can put her in, could put this cage in between um, two frames like this, squash it in. Well, let me show you. Whoa. <laughs> well, you know, if, you could let your assistant. I know. wanted to get it out of my way. You know? I know, the assistant wasn't working. The assistant's not working. For me. All right, so normally with this, so now you're going to wreck a little comb here. They'll, don't worry about it. They'll build it up. So I'm just going to squash her in there nice and, uh, see how nice and deep that goes in there? All, almost all the way down to the mid rib. Well, Bill, people who are first time beekeepers and you don't have a, you don't have drawn comb. comb. You can yeah. it's you it, it's easier. It. Yep. It's easier because with uh, with without drawn comb, you can it'll fit between two frames. It fits, but, like, but then you fall. okay. Thank you. We're gonna get, go over that. So what you have to do then is you have to make sure that. I pulled this exactly. off, right? Yes. I you leave this on. thing on, yep. right? And you can Let's staple it, it to the top of the front. Yes. Right, so you want to make sure, so thank you, Sylvia, for pointing that out. You want to make sure that your queen cage doesn't fall to the bottom of the box. That sort of defeats the purpose. She's down there. They might cluster around it, they may not. She might be dead in the morning, so you don't want to do that. You spent $35 for an advertised Italian queen, Early which is Italian. probably... <laughs> Early and when you're in a strap, right, so see, they you'll pay sixty dollars. Yeah, see, see, they uh, almost robbery for it when you realize you have no queen. <laughs> they almost fit. See, they almost fit together. Farming ten <clears throat> queenless. All right. So if you if you were to take a look, if you had the advantage of being able to take a look in there, you'd be able to see that 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 cage is nice and tight in there. You're gonna have to make sure that these frames stay snug, and that should be space. She'll be in there. Well, the shoulders are touching. You automatically have a bee space. Yep. And then if these two frames are in there nice and snug, the queen will stay in that cage and be released by the bee. Right? So, drone. Drone. <clears throat> oh, you got a drone out? Yep. And your, yeah. my candy plug in this case is... No, don't, don't let that fly away. We want that drone. <laughs> <laughs> there he is. It's like a cartoon. <laughs> it's like... It's, uh, that's my life, a cartoon. <laughs> So there's a couple of things about drones you got to know right away. Um, so this drone's not mature yet. All right. So if this is a queen, I would have grabbed her by her wings like this, right, and held her, right. And then if it's a queen, then you could actually take it and hold her um, legs like that, right. So yeah, you just cannot do this in. You got to be in a gentle way, right. 
And then if you had your queen that you grabbed her like that, you're practicing on drones. So by the time you get, you do 50 or 60 drones, you, you can do your queen, right? You drop her in there and then you use this little plunger. All right, so now you, you wait until the bee positions its thorax underneath a little square. You take your pen out, wet it a little bit, and paint the dot on it. <laughs> Good. That's how it's done. Now that, now Is that. Is he alive? Yeah, he's alive. It's a little sad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Miss Mabel. Oh. Miss Mabel. <laughs> I don't know if he was moving anymore. <laughs> yeah. You don't want to take all of that time to do it with this plunger and all that like an amateur. You can just go ahead and paint the dot on the <laughs> See? But you went out of the feet for that, right? What's that? You're holding them by the feet. I'm holding her yeah. by, I'm You're holding the feet. by the feet. Yeah, you yeah. do not want to break a foot on it. Uh. If you do that, she won't be able to figure out what cell size she's in. And she won't lay the proper egg in that cell. And she might lay all R unfertilized -E eggs. CK. Or all fertilized yeah. eggs. She doesn't function without a front line. Do you need a special marker, Bill, to mark them? Or can you use anything? Yeah, I bought this at the cell. Where did I buy this? Staples? Staples or something okay. like that. You know, but you don't need anything special. No, now this drone, we're going to let this drone... <laughs> live in this colony for a while and and actually you if you do this if you if you actually mark a bunch of drones you'll find them in different colonies in New York. they don't stay don't with stay. the same colony they have no allegiance to that colony. pigs they fly <laughs> lurches please <laughs> You know, because she's she's from Northwest Connecticut. What do you want? <laughs> they have one purpose, and we know what it is. Well, we don't really know what their actual um, purpose is inside the colony. We, we there's always been this crazy mythology about. Oh yeah, um, see, they're, 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 they're got the hiney and the hair in the air. Yeah, drones not uh, not doing anything inside the colony. But, I think they warm the in the winter time. Yeah, they're, they're, they're they are they are here bees in the winter. Yeah. But the the current the thinking is that they have a hormonal signature that balances the colony out. <coughs> right. So it's like every um, everything in nature. There's a, there's Ooh. a purpose that every drone has you know, a stag. We don't like <laughs> we we think we know everything. We know nothing. All right. So we have our combs ready to go back in once we shake these bees. Right here. We have our queen squash between two frames. Mm -hmm. I'm mark and so now, why don't huh? you put that in first? Where? Oh. What? Why don't you put the queen in first? No, 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 no. Mm -hmm. No, we're going to put her in after we shake all the bees. Okay. You got a feeder ready for it, too? Mm -hmm. We do have a feeder. Well, no, we don't, I don't actually. See a feeder. <laughs> I don't we have, have a feeder I, I, ready. The one thing I don't have is an extra feeder. I'll have to come back. You do not want to get stung inside your ear cap. <laughs> Or your nose. You do Inside not. your nose. Oh. They, they love the nose. The nose will kill you. All right, so let's shake these in. Smoker. Hey, you're the smoker. Uh, I got it. Actually, they are not. Is that a normal size package, though? Three pounds. Yeah. Look at that. They're crawling up the sides of the comb. Up at the Very nice. They survived. Let's try to get as many of them out of there as we can. I actually had a few. Yeah, I, 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 okay. It's well, been two packages. Good job. And the first thing we're going to do is put the queen in there so they know she's with them. After the two packages. Now I'm going to, I off. Okay. I, I tricked you and deftly installed the queen on frame four between frame three and four so she's out of the way of any kind of a feeder mm -hmm. that we put on the top. Oh. You know, Listen to that. They're, they're, they're noisy. So you'll be using a bucket? No, it's too cold, right? Yeah. Right. Now, get your hive tool. In this case, we're going to use our hive tool right here. Whoa, I'm sorry. <laughs> that, that tool? My hands are cold. All right, I'm going to squeeze them like this. Now, normally you don't do that because you want to make sure that your frames are always in the center <clears throat> right so when you get done with the 10 frame colony like this you squeeze them over to one side like that but then you pull them the other way so it's an equal space between each um, shoulder and the and the box and that way they don't build like there's too much of a space here they'll build uh, comb on the birth oh, yeah. or something like that. 
Right. So that's how you shake install. <clears throat> Why would you not move them right now? Because I'm putting pressure on those two frames. But wouldn't you still have pressure and move them? And yeah, you would, forward, but, but it's not worth taking out. Well, I just, I just like the idea. Like I know, like now, right now, you I know, know I got pressure against those frames. Well, I, yeah, I could. I mean, it doesn't really matter much. Got it, got it. <laughs> I could do that. Maybe because we don't have one tool. I just Probably wanted to make you, I just want to make sure you understand that right. you have to keep an equal right. distance between right. both sides. Right, now, why don't you get one of those other kind of feeders that Ted has with the... Um, top feeder? Yeah, the top feeder. Yeah, except for the... Except what? Do you have a box? You want to, you, do, do you want to feed this differently? No, uh, well, hold on, let me see if I can. All right. See, you're the box, too. This is a migratory cover, right? So it doesn't need a inner cover. Ah, oh, exactly. All right, that's so a that's called a migratory cover. Yeah, it doesn't need an inner cover. What's the advantage of that? Um, they, that's a commercial cover, cover like they use those when they when they're going to pile a bunch of colonies on skids and and uh, abuse so them for, into almonds or something. So that's what they're doing. Oh, migratory is like moving, moving the hives around. Moving the hives around. Oh, okay. Migratory move, meaning moving the hives around. Sorry. I sometimes think people understand the vocabulary already, but um, they don't. So. So Are we ready to go back and look at that top bar? <laughs> I am. I, I want to see that. Big. <laughs> you can leave the front entrance open. Somebody's got to figure out. We have to feed this colony now. Yeah. Cannot leave it in this state. If we had a top feeder, we could use that. Oh, we don't have a division board feeder, I don't think. But anyway, before we leave, the administrators of this <laughs> thing leave, um, we will we will feed these bees. So what we'll do is we'll take these bars out, put them over here. What are we doing over here? I forgot. Putting the feeder in there. <laughs> So much. Thank We're going to put the feeder in today. See how nice this feeder fits right in there? See, and it doesn't interfere with bars that are not drawn yet. They, they can slide over the top of it, no problem. Now we're going to pour. We should, we should be brave and say it's in a situation that we think it's going to be. There's going to be a big cluster of bees in there. I'd like to look just so I don't feel stupid <laughs> before him. So where's our syrup? Right here. Right here. Yeah, right, let's pour that in. So I'm probably going to need all of it in here. Right. Remember, this is pine needles that I'm pouring it on. And as I explained earlier, <laughs> um, is that they purchase will... syrup? No, he made this. Oh. Is it one to one? It's one to one. Oh yeah. Right. So now what happens is the um, syrup floats, I mean, floats the, these um, pine needles. So what you do is you just push them down in it. So here's the whole feeder. You can kind of look at this if you want. Just push the needles down. And that's it. Believe it or not, now what they'll do is bees will go in here and they will, they will clean every needle i mean i never get over it. as a matter of fact i've taken uh pine needles out of a out of a feeder like this and used them in a the smoker uh, so they're dry and nice so Bill, how do you extract you got a crush and strain yeah, it's a pressing for the top one. crush and strain yeah dun, 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 dun. all right so now you're not going to have a whole lot of time to look hopefully when i lift this they're in a ball, like they've clustered in a ball. If not, we're going to feed them anyway, so but it would be nice if they're not. So somebody look in there and see if they're in a nice little ball. Oh, yeah. Yes. They're all hanging. Oh, wow. See, they're up way up front. They're hanging here, but... I not say a ball, but... The, bo the ball of bees, the actual bees that are clustered, they're up in this area here. These are stragglers. So what ha will happen here is if I, if I push this feeder in, they'll fall down into the syrup, so we don't want to kill these bees, right? So we're going to shake them off the frame. Get these bees off the frame. Must, must the queen is here. I was going to say, how do you know where the queen is? She could be there. Yeah. Let's, see, let's see what happens. Yeah. 
So, so with a top bar hive, you have a little scraper built in. So you can just go like that and scrape the bees off. So how many frames do you have? Or how many bars do they usually have? It's 10? No, no, no. There's like 26 in here. You'll but see. you only have your division. We've only got them going. Yeah, I only, they're 10. only starting now. <clears throat> so then as they build, you move them. So I don't like the way these are. I don't know if the queen might be right here somewhere. So let's just move it over like this, right? Now we have give, we're given them access to that feeder, right? So that doubt, I doubt that they'll start building comb right here. They may, you know, they do what they want. Now the now the thing is just to put them back, right? put all the bars back. Would it be easier if the, the walls of that feeder box were shorter? Then they could just put it slightly under them. It will slide under there, but I didn't want to knock over, the, knock the cluster into the bees, mm -hmm. into the feeder. It'll yeah. slide all the way into front. The way you get, the way you get bars in is you slide them in and knock the bees off. Let's see. Let's see. So you no longer need this. They're already down there in the feeder, you right? No so longer need this. Part. Oh yeah. Totally see them drinking. No, we don't need that part. See them in there? Yeah. They're already in there, like saying, "Hey, we got some." We have some syrup in there. See, they're flying in there. All right, so the, this might work. Hopefully. Can you put something like that out for your legs, Jeff, please? Mm, open feeding like yeah. that? Well, see, this is not considered open feeding because it's inside of a box. Right. I would not, I would not recommend that you open feed ever, unless you know something I don't know. Um, that's a way you can spread disease. You can get robbing started that way. Not really a good practice. That's bar 21. That's it. With the frame feeder, you just do the same. You take a handful of the pine needles, just stuff, stuff them, in, them in, in there. And you don't use the top part, obviously. And you just. You can like, use the top part, but I wouldn't. You know, okay. like you can take a division board feeder, stiff them full of um, pine needles. Just stuff it up and then pour yeah. the. And then find in your neighborhood, you know, there's always, there's always white pine trees in your neighborhood that yeah. can give you a. a constant source of needles. And I missed it. Where'd you put your divider? I did. Behind the feeder? Nope. Oh, it's you not didn't in there. In. Don't so you just put anymore. the feeder in there? Yeah, I just put it in there. We could put it behind the feeder if we wanted. But you had intended to do it, right? I could have, yeah. But, you, but in the end, where, the, where, where it was hanging, you decided not to? Yeah, where there was... The, I would have liked to have the cluster perfect. Mm -hmm. um, it didn't work that way, but it was divided a little bit. Some of it was up here, some of it was over there. Um, maybe it's the temperature, but they'll get it together and they'll start building comb. I have to watch how they build comb. They should start building comb right around here at this point, you know, and then um, then once they start building comb, we got them because then we can just move the feeder around. Hmm. You always have to have syrup that can um, No, they'll, they'll, that's only for this time of year. In the, in the fall, we change the formula and we make it two to one. It's one to one now by weight. So the way I like to remember it is just a 10 pound bag of sugar and um, a gallon of water is about one to one. A gallon of water weighs about eight and eight point three pounds. 10 pound bag of sugar. You can actually buy two. Now, the sugar industry along with every other uh, industry has um, <clears throat> tricked us into thinking that a five pound bag of sugar is actually um, what we buy when we buy the little one, but if you look close, it's only four pounds, so they changed the poundage on us on that one. And so, so two four pound bags and one gallon of sugars that's, I mean, a one, um, one gallon of water, one gallon of water, but it's distilled water. Uh, I, I was uh, buying distilled, but it gets expensive. Yeah, distilled no, water, no, or? you don't need distilled water for them. Tap? Yeah, tap water's fine. Really? Yeah, okay. And um, you don't, with, with one to one, water. you don't even need warm water, you can use cold. Water Here's the thing with top bar eyes. I want you to do this. You can always tell where you don't need an infrared clan camera. You don't need anything. You can feel where your bees are. I feel it. Down here, cold. Start going up here. You'll feel how warm. Bill, after 27 there, it says F on that. Is that right? That's a filler. Filler board. Yeah. I'm not going to try. Does that to make it easy to take them, take them out? Feels really warm. Yeah, um, that's where the majority of them are right there. Um, 
Yeah, it makes it so that, well, I when I built this, 28 bars fit in it perfect. Mm -hmm. And so somewhere it lost some width. I don't know where, <laughs> but, I, but these bars are not the bars I made for this top bar high, but they work. Um, and uh, so maybe I was experimenting with the width here. Uh, some of them I was making an inch and a half, some of them I was making an inch and a quarter. Mm -hmm. I was trying to figure out which way um, it's best for them to draw from. And so I got a mixture of bars in this in this county, and so it didn't come out even, so I just, I just cut that one to fit. Yeah, there's no standard to get the right deep space when you're building those? And... Yeah. But I mean, you said no, no, no. They make the B space themselves. Okay. So you mean the distance between two bars? Yeah. The distance between two bars is there's the B space. So if they built out this and this, they would have just a B space in there. So yes, the answer is yes. You have to have an inch and a quarter bar, and the center is where you want to try to guide them to build, and then they'll end up with a nice B space on their side. Now bees in the top bar hive do anything they want. Like, you know, they decide, hey, we're going to build the comb this way. <laughs> so um, you can't have that happen because then you can't take them out. Mm -hmm. So it's critical in the beginning of the life of a top bar, if you get to the point where we just did, and they start to build comb in it, you have to manage the comb in the beginning. Sometimes colonies will come out and just start building nice, beautiful, straight comb. Sometimes they cross the comb. Mm -hmm. Right, so you'll know that right away. And so... Um, Three days from now, I'll come back. Well, not three, because it's going to be below zero or something. Mm -hmm. As soon as it starts to warm up, I'll come back here and make sure that they're drawing the comb along those guides I gave them. If they're not doing that, I'm going to move the comb with my hand. And, and I'm going to actually manage the comb in the beginning. You get one comb drawn straight, and they'll draw the rest of them straight. How do you right. harvest the honey? It's you got to just cut it off those bars and then squash it and, and, and uh, screen it down. It's crushing strain for a top bar. Right? No lifting, beautiful biology. You can see, and we're going to put the top on now. That's the insulated top. All right, you with that? Boy, I built this. I built this top just to show off. It's it's not. Uh, you don't need a top like this. Of course, you can just use it. It's an advantage of a top bar hive. Lots of advantages from top bar hive. There's lots of disadvantages also, but there's lots of advantages. The advantages are that there's a natural um, setting for the bees. They they will build all new comb all the time for you. There's no. Uh, you don't have to worry about, um, well, comb will age out in the top bar hive, but um, normally I just knock it down and let them build new comb if I think it aged out. Um, but the biggest advantage is there's no heavy lifting at all. You don't have to lift anything heavy in the top bar hive. Just one frame at a time, and um, hopefully some of you will come back, and if this colony survives and behaves, and builds out a lot, a lot of nice comb flow, you'll see the advantage of uh, being able to inspect a colony like this. They stay calm. You're not exposing the whole colony. You're only taking one bar out at a time. So they stay nice and calm in the colony, you know, and um, it's a nice, and you see all the different biology. There's a completely different biology that occurs with the top bar, because you're gonna watch them build comb a different way. You'll see how much comb, like they will build, um, Lots of drone comb in this country. The, the second thing they'll do is start to build drone comb. And they'll build whole frames of just drones. And so that's... Bill, is this the standard size also? Yeah, well, you, you can... Kind of yeah, you can, you can... I made this. You can buy it. Right. Right, so you can buy uh, top eyes and get going. Yeah. I made this one just... Um, in your free time? Well, I made it, you know, <laughs> a, de a decade ago. How do you know if the comb ages out? What do you, what science Well, I mean, about far? five years or six years, oh. I get rid of it. I mean, there's other really interesting signs. Sometimes you'll see bees will begin to entomb comb. Like, I didn't see any in any of this. I would have showed it to you. But someone knows they'll take a cell and they'll fill that cell with wax. Now, you'll see that on a lot of frames. Anytime you see, I mean, on a lot of cells on that frame, anytime you see entombed comb, 
get rid of that frame because the bees have decided there's something wrong with that. Right? So they're, they're starting to say, hey, you can't lay in here anymore. Right? It could be anything. We don't know. But that's my signal. And that usually doesn't happen right away. That won't happen until three, four, five years. And then you got to get rid of it. I'll throw away um, 60 or 80 comb every year. It's, that's, it's a shame. I hate doing it. But um, uh, I... I just feel like I know I'm between two apple orchards. I know I'm picking up a big pesticide load, so I want to make sure that I keep it clean. So you're, you're looking for those plugged up cells? Well, that that's are... not all. I mean, just the date's enough. Oh. So mark your date, like we did here. You know how we marked 22 on all of those frames? I didn't see that. Yeah, no, you know, I know <laughs> why you didn't see it. You didn't <laughs> no. see it because I didn't do it. So I'm going to mess this up and do it. <laughs> well, one of them says 22. Where? Yeah, the number. Number 22. <laughs> so these will all be 22. So we're going to go right down at some point and do that all. And, and all that, right? So we're not going to bother with it. Then I'll know that these combs, you do the same thing to your combs at home. Right? Put the date on them. Or use the, go to, use the chart for the year of the the color of the queen that year and put that dot on here and then you'll know when that color comes around again those bees are those frames are five years old it's probably a good time to do right so you can use your your marking pen yeah so with uh frames with plastic foundation you just scrape that old comb off and yeah. re reuse it you can reuse the frame it's, it's it's a little bit difficult now i just wrote an article for me i was actually asked to write this article by the editor and I, I i so i did it um i normally wouldn't take up the topic of plastic inside of bee colonies but he asked me to do it so i i did a bunch of research and wrote an article It'll be out probably next month in american bee journal do anybody get american bee journal i do oh yeah all right so it. leave my article um about uh the use of plastic high trucks <laughs> and um <clears throat> so we're going to put 22 on them later on because it's insulated you know so this top's insulated so i want to keep the bees warm do you keep it insulated all year yep mm -hmm. you them got did i squash one there's a couple in there yeah. kill bees almost every time you move all right so if you want to come to the back of this top arrow i'll show you some of its features so it has a bottom board that pulls out you can already see what the bees have done, right? So, so, so you're saying, well, you can't really tell much by this, Bill, but I can. Why? Because what do you see here? What, these, see these little beautiful things? Those are wax scales. So right, this is where the division board was. See it? Right? Yeah. That's where the division board was. Up here is what was, the, so a lot of this is detritus inside the colony. But if you notice these wax scales, so they're already starting to build wax, right? So they're out building wax already. As soon as we, there's legs in here, head parts and all that. But here's all wax scales. See on the side, and all that. So and you could check for mites too, right? Yeah. Yes, you can check mites. for mites. There might be a mite in here. I doubt it though, but I don't see any. Do you guys see any dead, any dead mites? Yeah, there's no mites in it. Poop, poop. <laughs> One right, sick bee. but the wax scales, right? Wax they're scales. they're not that easy to see, but once you learn how to recognize them, see there they are. Shiny. That all beeswax comes out of a bee liquid, right? So when it comes out of the gland, it has the bees have like six or eight wax glands on the bottom of their abdomen. It comes out a liquid out of exudes out of their exoskeleton, goes on to the little part of their body called the wax mirror under there, and then it hardens into a scale. And then they take, because you can't get a scale out of a bee, right? You wouldn't be able to get hard wax out of a bee, right? So it has to come out liquid. It's an, it's an incredible process. And um, you then, then it hardens, and then they use their mandibles, uh, well, their, their feet. They take it with their feet off of their wax scales, it bring it up there. to their, yeah, bring it up to their mandible, and then they um, macerate it a little bit. 
masticated a little bit. That's what I meant. Um, and then they... Um, Spicy beaks. Yeah. <laughs> and then they... <laughs> English is a tough language. You should try Thai. Try Thai. Damn. So, so um, yeah. So, and then they harden it into a little... Um, a little a combination of um, glandular secretions and wax, and they make comb. Right, so. Yep, comes out liquid. Clean it off, put it back in, and now you might want to see under here is also a screen. So this has actually got a screen bottom, so there's a nice screen in there that runs the whole length of the colony. You know, and you can... Um, I leave that screen in all year, but in cold weather like this, if I put the bottom board in, it's not, it's not, it's not open. So the screen is common for mall top bar hives? That's no. Okay. Yeah, you have to, you have to like, get one that has it. If you want it. Bill, did you make this hive? Yes. I made a, I made about five of these. Um, and over the years, I've given them away, and um, I have one at home that I'll dump that other package in because I think they're going to be finished. Does that um, board stay in year round? No, you can take it out, it out and if it gets warm or you want to, um, you know, if you you have to be careful during swarm season with screen bottom boards in general because if um, if you leave your screen bottom boards in during swarm season, if there's a swarm that um, casts from a colony and it doesn't quite make it and it comes back lots of times you'll get bees in the ba they call them you know basement bees and if they'll come in the queen will come back for the colony she might not be able to make it in she'll go underneath and then you'll get ten thousand bees on. every year i get these calls hey there's a big bee colony underneath my what happened to there's a queen on. <laughs> or a virgin queen came back after she got mated missed her colony and went under that one and they'll they'll feed it. They'll feed the bees under there. They'll they'll that colony will live, draw comb, and so it's a good idea to make sure that you check under all your screen bottom boards, especially around swarm season, to see if got bees under there. And then I usually get under it. Um, if it's a Langstroth colony, you have to get under it and find the queen. So is your point that it, they're more likely to go under? Or the no, no, no. They're not more likely to go under. You just have to keep. You have to keep. Yeah. Well, the solid board they will not go under. Okay. So do I keep a chloroplast board on mine? Yeah. Would that prevent that from happening? Yes. I mean, okay. Well, your point is that if the screen is open, the screen is yeah. If it's if it's, if it's yeah. they're not more likely they can. They can't. Okay. You know, for the if it, if it all works right, they won't. But if it's closed or if it's a solid bottom board, then they can't. Okay. So they won't. They won't do okay. that at all. There's, they won't hang under there. Yeah. But um, you know, so I will take colonies, flip them over, and say, oh wow, look, there's the queen. Hmm. So you would do without screen boards at all? Yeah, you can do solid bottom boards. We had one in there. Right? So listen, uh, any more questions? If or not, we'll just wrap it up. This is great. One quick one. Thank you. Every yeah. now and then I'll see you be kind of pumping its abdomen like that, usually when it's on my skin. What is that? That means that, okay, so so what a bee, a bee's flying, right? So bees don't have lungs. They have um, on the sides, on their sides, they have trach uh, they have um, spiracles, they call them. That's how they breathe. They have a whole tracheal system. They don't have any lungs at all. So for them to actually pump out the carbon dioxide from their metabolic waste and bring in air, they have to move their exoskeleton. Like so what, what you're seeing, yeah, you're seeing that, okay. that bee is breathing. Right? Okay. Energy requirements for this. They have to move their blood fill. <laughs> they're after, they have, that's their exoskeleton. Yeah, they're, they're integument. They're, they're insects, so they have exoskeletons, right? Mm -hmm. And you see it doing? It's pumping yeah, it right, right there? Right, that bee is breathing. All right? Great, thanks. Now, you see this after a long flight. You see it sometimes. Um, <clears throat> Just making all that noise. I got a bee. Got a pocket full of bees. Again? <laughs> Will you keep this pocket. this open? Yeah. Keep that open. Yeah, I don't think there's much problem keeping that open. These some these bees are dead, right? Now, you can even even at this early stage, you can you can observe a really interesting biological behavior. <clears throat> if you'll notice those bees, any bee that lands on that board is challenged by another bee. 
and they're trying to figure out do I put, does this be belong here so I mean one might skate right in but you'll, you'll see it see how they'll, they'll like see that bee right there that just landed see that they knocked they kicked it out of it does that happen if and, a bee and, comes from yeah, well yeah if a bee comes from somewhere else they'll do and this one has its nasinoff gland out there it's kind of like a little too late for that but with these are <laughs> So even though we had a big mess of bees flying all over the place, there are still some flying. They just basically settled in and came to the colony, right? They stand up like that. They're that's the that's the Nazanoff behavior right there. Yeah. Okay. They're in defensive mode. No. No, that's a that's a they call it the come heather pheromone. They're actually signaling. Oh, bringing them in. Yeah, they're actually signaling that they come. Now, see, this bee, if it, if it had the opportunity, it would sting me right now. Yeah. It a stinger. But I'm not giving it the opportunity. So that's how you pick up a queen, right? Like that with its wings. And then you grab the legs like this. Now, for this bee, if I grab the legs, it likely to sting me. But um, if it's a queen, it won't. People say they get stung by queens. Don't listen to that. Nobody ever got stung by a queen in the history of bee people. They don't sting people, they sting other queens. So who, who's a Nazanoff and who's a breathing bee? Well, they're not. They, all bees breathe. Here's a bee breathing right here. Right. So how do you tell the difference? Well, the Nazanoff, they have their back up they and they've got a little gland exposed, but there's none doing it now because yeah. you might find one in the other colonies that we just installed. But they're not doing it now. Yeah. They don't need to. They only do that if it's a new, if they're in a new place. If they're in a new place or they want to signal um, the bees in this colony. For some reason, we disturb them and they want to signal uh, that they belong here. If you start taking a lot of bees out of a colony, mm -hmm. they start to nest. Them. Some bees, as soon as you open the box, they will line up on top and start with their nesting off plan. That's, that's usually an interesting um, behavior to observe also. So your job as a beekeeper is animal husbandry, right? You are not, yeah, see that they're engaged in a little battle, those two people. So you're not gonna just stick them in here and think they're gonna be all right. And you can't just say, oh, I installed them and they're good for now, they're good forever. They aren't, you have to, you have to manage them as if they were farm animals. You wouldn't, or, or if you had a dog or a cat or something, you just wouldn't let them go. You have to feed them, take care of them, make sure they don't have diseases. So you have to make sure you do that. And you have to, now that we've got these installed, you have to register these bees with the state of Connecticut. It is not a option, it's a law. So you do that and you, you don't have any problem. And there's no fee for it and nobody's gonna come after you from the state, because I, I know those folks, I met with them yesterday. Um, their intention is to have your colonies registered so that you can, they can tell you if there's any problems in the area with bees.